can I just, um... I don't, I don't know what to... Um... Um... I think, uh... I don't know what to say, I'm sorry. You don't know sometimes what to say and you're basically walking on eggshells. Sometimes it can shock people if someone says you're having a good day. They just expect you to say, yes, Al, I'm okay. And I've said, no, I'm not. And some people can get taken aback. Oh, oh, oh. And I think there's the fear of saying the wrong thing. You know, what do I know about mental health? I was diagnosed with anorexia nervosa, body dysmorphic disorder, and obsessive compulsive disorder back in 2013. And on Friday the 29th of August, 2014, I tried to take my own life. My name's Hakira and I'm Sandeep's mom, mother, is it? Best friend. And best friend. <laughs> Dave first, uh, first joined the Mint session um, when he was struggling with his, uh, with his mental health. And uh, from there we kind of in a strange way, I hit it off, I think. It's love at first sight. I like to think of it that way. <laughs> I'm Dr. Will Murcott. I'm a mental health nurse and senior lecturer with the Open University. For me, listening is at the top of the list. I think that's the first and most important step. If you can, active listening, repeating back some of the things that they've said to you so that they can feel and realise that they're being helped. That first initial conversation that you had with me uh, when my mum and dad sat me down, yeah. that's when the bubble popped for me. That's when I thought at that very moment that someone's noticing how I'm feeling. Someone is noticing and having an oversight of my pain just asking how you are, mm. it was so crucial and so important to me at that moment. Ask twice, you know, are you okay? Yeah, I'm all right, but no, are you really okay? And then it's like, well, no, actually I'm not. I think there is an urge to, to try and problem solve and do something. And there's almost need sometimes to be able to fix a, a problem or a person. And sometimes that's not the right thing to do in that situation. People aren't necessarily looking for answers. People want to be heard. One of the things I've learned as a mental health professional is that often if I try and set goals or have my own needs and wants and desires for how somebody should get better, they are usually wrong. <laughs> and so from my point of view, it's, it's working with a person at their pace and trying to understand how they want to move. You can suggest go to see your GP, you can suggest support groups, you can suggest people taking an activity. You can go and join in that activity with them, so it's they're not feeling alone with that. One size does not fit all. You have had a really great idea, didn't you? The family trusted yes. circle. So what we do, we, we go out the family environment and go to a coffee shop or, or, or just sit there, all four of us, actually doing our pause and negs. What's been your positive for the whole month? What's been your negative for the whole month? We spend a lot of time insulting each other. <laughs> <laughs> um, we just send each other little videos or, yeah. oh yeah, I've been watching that and just little clips. Everybody's at the click of a button now. You're in my pocket. Yeah. If they're really struggling and at breaking point, emerge mm. emergency. Um, phone lines out Samaritans. there and Samaritans as well. They need to know that there is someone there out is there. support out there. Mm. And it's so hard, so hard to see that when you are in a dark place. When you're in a dark place, yeah. One of the scary things is that kind of pressure of what what do I do if? Because it could be nothing more scary than having somebody talk to you about ending their life harming themselves in some way. Really, the person needs to know as well at what point you will find something acceptable or unacceptable and then have to do something or involve somebody else. I always try and get that conversation done as soon as I can to say, look, you know, I will never breach your confidence, but if there are things that worry me, then, then I, I may have to do something about that. And again, that's absolutely okay. 
because the person will thank you for it afterwards. Let people know that I'm here and we're gonna do this together. So if that means, right, me and you, we're gonna make an appointment at the GP, we'll go together and we'll do this together. And it's that about, it's about being in the mud together. You have to keep your own emotional batteries charged up because when they're drained out, you can't help anybody else and you struggle to function, let alone just trying to look after yourself. The plane and the oxygen mask, put your oxygen mask on first. Uh, Self-care is, is, is the number one priority, I, th I think. So I don't think you can actually fail, and that's something that I would really push to everyone who's helping someone with mental health uh, struggles, is you haven't failed, you cannot fail, but you can do something. Trust, again, trust your instincts, be yourself. The right thing is probably what you first felt, and that could have been sitting and listening, just nodding. Um, or it could have been responding, tell me more about that. So not to over worry, not to overthink, but there is support out there and there are people that will listen to you and give you advice and guidance. And it's important to talk. Oh my God, it's so important to talk. Very important to talk. We, we, we had most chats with love you, man. You know, mm. it's, yeah, it's good, to, it's good to have someone like Josh in my life. It makes my life Vice better. Versa. <laughs>